So we've been working with the Django shell and typing commands in to insert records and populate fields and create the both sides of many to many and then link them together. And so it, it, some applications that we're going to build, you're going to put up your super social um, ride sharing thing that you just built and people are going to start filling it with data. But other times you're actually building a website for which the data is already known. You might actually be reading a bunch of data and putting it into a database from some source. Maybe it's an API, maybe you're scraping or whatever. And so you have some source of data and you want to put it into the database and you don't want to put it in by hand. And so we're going to talk a little bit how you can write a script to load data into your Django database, into your Django models after you've defined those Django models. And so we're going to actually take some CSV data, we're going to read it from a file, and it's just comma separated values, and we're going to use the, uh, the, the course person membership model from before, and we're going to say basically, uh, here's a person with their email address, their role, which is instructor or learner, and then the course that they're in. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a script to read through all those things and then insert and populate. Because you got to, when you're making a many-to-many, -many, you got to like put both sides in and then connect it together. And so the code will be in DJ Free Samples scripts manyload.py. That's the code to load it, to read this file, and then create it, put it into dbsqlite, informed by the data model in the in the many-to-many -many example that I gave you with the with the course stuff. Okay, so so that's what this is. Now running scripts is part of a feature of Django called the Django extensions. Now if you've already done this through when you you installed uh, DJ Free Samples and you ran pip minus pip three minus r requirements.txt, you already put this in. But it doesn't hurt to be go into your virtual environment and type pip install Django pip three install Django extensions and make sure it's already there. Because if it's not already there, then it will get installed. Otherwise, this whole script thing won't work, right? You after you install it, you do have to put a little link into your settings.py. That's Django extent Django under store extensions in your installed apps. And there's documentation on how to do, how all to do this. So that's the first thing you've got to do. Once you've installed it with pip, you have to pull it into your Django application. So when Django first loads up, which is python3manage.py, at that point, that says pull this in, pull this in, pull all these other things in. All your apps, your extensions, the Django features you need, etc., 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 and that's in the project settings.py file. So Django extensions won't work if you don't put it in this file. Now, if you're running on Python anywhere, of course, after you edit this file, you gotta, you gotta reset your web, but I think you probably figured that out by now. We wouldn't have got this far if you weren't resetting your web server on uh, Python anywhere. The next thing you do is within your uh, Django project file, you make a scripts folder. And you, you put this file, empty file, touches the Unix command to create an empty file script slash underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. It, I, this is just kind of a thing you do. And what it is is an indication as Python is reading through these folders to say this folder contains modules that are suitable for importing. And that's just a signal. And I think later versions of Python make this less important, but we've always put this in. So if you're going to put like classes that are intended to be imported into some other application, we always put this empty file underscore underscore init dot under, under, two underscores init two underscores dot py. So touch says make an empty file of this name. So our data file looks like this. It's just a CSV. Python has a great CSV reading thing. Um, and it has three columns, the person's name, their role in the course, and their course. It's pretty small just because I want to show it to you. So here's the code that, uh, that we've got. And um, we'll see in a second that you can't just run this in Python. You've got to run this after that whole Django extensions says load up all the Django stuff and then run my code as compared to just run my code. If you run your code, if you just run your code, that import of many.models person code membership, course membership is just going to blow up because it hasn't run the settings.py first. You can't do that, but Python3manage.py does do the settings 
and loads all these things and makes it so that this import works because that's how you access the data models. And there's other things like it's made the connection to the database, the DBSQL Lite, and figured all that stuff out. You don't, you don't write a single line of that, right? And that's all magically done sort of before you start. And you, all you have to do in the script file is make a method called run. It takes no parameters. And when the script starts, it's going to call your run method. So your first line of code is right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the CSV file. And we're going to use the CSV library, CSV reader F hand, and we're going to get our CSV reader. Um, this is just an iterable thing that you can go read your way through this. And it parses the CSV and gives you a nice array out of the CSV. And if there's quotes in there, it knows about that and escape characters. And CSV files are kind of complex. The one I showed you is super simple, but you may quickly run into a CSV that's got UTF-8 characters in it or who knows what's in it. And you want to use this CSV reader rather than just doing a split on commas. The one I gave you, split on commas will work, but you don't really want to count on that. You really want to use CSV. And again, it's all built into Python, so Python's awesome, so away we go. Now, the first thing we do before we get going is we, we take the person class, dot objects is kind of like a thing we say after the class, dot objects all, that's like a filter, and then dot delete. That is kind of like a delete from person table. And then we're going to delete all from the course table, and we're going to delete from the membership table. Now, because we have, so if you go to the, the person table, the membership table, and the course table, if you recall, there, were, uh, there was a um, on delete cascade for both of the foreign key relationships coming out of the membership table. So probably, if all was well, after the person objects all was delete was done, and the course objects all delete was done, the membership table would likely be empty. Because if you empty out the course table, empty out the membership table, and you have on delete equals cascade, those deletions in those destination tables will percolate back into the source table and cause those rows to be deleted, just like ch -ch -ch -ch. So, so this is... This is kind of redundant. Membership objects is kind of redundant because of on-delete cascade that we put into that data model. Okay, so we open our data. Let me clear this out. We open our data. We get a CSV reader. We wipe out the, the data, the old data that's in those two models in our database. That's in the DBSQLite file. And then we're going to read all the rows. Okay, We're going to just print the row out which just is a tuple. Uh, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a list actually. And then we're going to call person.objects. And this is really cool. A method called get or create. This is either going to retrieve a row that matches the email of the email address because the email address is the zeroth element because it's the first element. If it's not there, it will create it and then retrieve it. So this is kind of like Python's, this is very much like get in dictionaries, where it, if you use get the right way, you can basically increment or create something. In this case, we're loading it if it exists, and if it doesn't exist, we're making it, and then we're loading it. And part of what we did is we declared this email as unique. Um, and, and so it's going to load it up. And we do that for both the course and the person. And we actually are returned a tuple. The P and the C are the objects that we're going to get back for person. And created is a Boolean that tells you whether or not the getter create did a get or it did a create. If created is false, that means that there was one and we loaded it. If created is true, that means there wasn't one, and we created one. Now, in our situation, we really don't care whether it was created or not. And so we, when this line, these two lines are done, we know that we have a person associated with the email, the first parameter, and then the, a course associated with the course title, which is the last parameter. And if you look back at the CSV, you see there's redundancy, right? There's redundancy or replication. Python, Python, Python. Django, Django. SQL, SQL. Jane, Jane, Ed, 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 Sue. And so 
we're only going to insert Python once, and then we're going to use the same Python over and over. Because even though there's vertical replication in this data file, we're not going to have vertical replication in our person, membership, or course tables. So there's no vertical replication allowed. No vertical replication allowed. The world is full of vertical replication. Good data models are not. That's pretty profound, actually. Okay, so. So at this point, we have the two records in the two tables on the sides. P and C have those values. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the role is. Now, membership.learner, learner was just a constant. That was the number one, if you go back and look. And then we say if row sub one, which is rows a list, which the row sub one is the second thing in the list, is I, i.e. it's an instructor, then we're going to make our role be instructor. And then we're going to create a membership object using the role, that's just a number, the person is an object, and the course equals C, it's an object. So we're going to make that, it's still, and we get the variable M back, that's still sitting in memory, and then we save it, which then sticks that through table record, or the junction table record, into the membership database. So this is either going to retrieve or create, and then this is going to add the membership record. And before we started it, we cleaned everything out. So it's a pretty simple loader. There's lots of things you can do. I mean, I think if you were going to do this yourself, you would probably play around a little bit in the shell to make sure you, that statements like this would do what you want it to do. And then you'd write a nice little Python script and, and so that you could automate it so that you don't have to do it by hand for you know 20,000 records. Right, here is that, here is to just to remind you, this is that model right? Learner, instructor, those are just constants, and, um, and that's, that's what that did. So you run it, and recall that it prints the row, and so the row is just, a, after the CSV reader parses it, it's, it's got the three things, and one at a time, it inserts or, or retrieves, and then it looks at the middle one to see what the role is, and then it creates a membership record, and stores that membership record in the database. And so it's a pretty easy pattern to follow. Um, I'm sure the stuff that you're going to write will be a little more complex. I kept this simple so that it would uh, fit nicely in the, in the, on the screen. <clears throat> so here's just playing a little bit after all that stuff's been loaded. Um, we can take a look. Again, just so we can type interactively, we got to go into the, the project file, the project folder. Uh, GJ's free samples and run the shell using manage.py. We can import our models. We can say person objects values. That basically says select all the records from the person table and give them to me. We can retrieve PK equals one. PK stands for primary key. Say get the first person. What's their email? That'd be Jane. We can say for Jane, what are the courses? The courses is that virtual set that is querying the join table, the through table, um, and pulling it out, but we don't think about it that way. We just like, oh, this is a magic set that's always there. So x.courses.values says, what are the courses that Jane is a member of? And Jane is um, a member of Python and SQL. Uh, so let's go to get a course, right? The second course, course objects get pk equals two. So that's the Django course. And then we say, oh, let's go look at the members' values. And so that says, who are, who are the members of this course? Well, Ed is a member, and uh, Sue is a member, right? So this is the, the members of the course, right? There's the courses that, course members, and then user courses. And so we've looked sort of from the outside, we've kind of looked through the through table, to this list of things you know, on both sides. So that's a thing you can do, but sometimes you want to actually see that data. The one thing we did in this, in this membership is we actually modeled data in the through table. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab a course, right? And we're going to say, okay, go ahead and get course number two. And then membership set that basically now we're looking at the through table give us a, all the things of the membership set that are associated with this course, course Y, 
get them all and get the values. And so that basically is going, now we're going to see the records that are in the membership set. So we see them all, right? We see that person ID 2, course ID 2, the created date dat, the updated date, remember the updated dat, those are automatically put in there. Remember we talked about them. You just say auto add equals now and auto update equals now. But you also see the role value. So we can read the role value. So this is the way we see, oh, we're in this course. And now we see who's in this course. And are they a teacher or are they a learner? And so we can dig into the, the through table using this kind of syntax. So that's quite a bit of a romp through uh, one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. Data modeling, like I said, you can learn data modeling basically in a few hours and you can spend your life crafting amazing data models and it's really, it's a very, I love it. I just find it really rewarding to build cool data models and, and it's not that hard to build really good ones. I mean, it just amazes me how many people who are really smart that can't even build a basic good data model. Again, don't replicate string data, especially when it means the same thing, right? Um, <clears throat> we have the concept of primary keys, which are in each row. We have foreign keys, which point at a, a row in a different table. And then we have the one-to-many relationships and the many-to-many -many relationships. And our local library application is a simple data model, and yet it does a really good job of giving us examples of each of these things in action.